Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. So we have officially now watched the very final episode of part two, and I I I can't get over the episode. I, I really can't. Yeah, I I did watch it differently. I guess I should like like put a disclaimer here. I did watch it differently, so I don't know if that's gonna change my my overall review of the episode. Because usually when I watch it, I'll watch it in the basement here. I'll watch it on my computer, my TV, or on my phone sometimes. And so I'm not necessarily getting all of the right theatrics when it when it comes to sound and just the quality of watching it. Right. Well, this time I actually watched it upstairs, and I have a like a a really good sound bar and everything. And just watching it, experiencing this episode felt like an actual movie and i know it's not necessarily due to that either like it's not completely due to the fact that i was using a soundbar this time to watch the episode right and so I, I got that really like nice quality like audio coming through but it was just the way the episode was structured overall this episode was structured so well that it, you know like the walking dead does this i mean this episode really reminded me of the season 10 finale where it was just done so cinematically and you can see like when they want to do really big episodes like this, they really know how to do it right. Like they do it so good. And this makes me so excited for what the Rick movie can actually be for what the, you know, just the possibilities in the future for Isle of the Dead. Like that's going to be a really big one here. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to talk about here. So anyways, before we go any further, please be aware that this video will contain spoilers for episode 16 of season 11. Also, make sure to be a subscriber if you want more Walking Dead content like this. I'm going to be doing a lot of videos on this episode. We didn't actually see a trailer for episode uh, or for part three. So, you know, definitely we're going to be, you know, on the lookout for that now. I mean, definitely I'm excited for Comic-Con. Unless there was one released, but I didn't see it on AMC Plus on my end. So I'm guessing they're going to be holding off on that for a little bit, which is, I mean, that's totally fine. Honestly, with where this episode ended off... This felt like a finale. I saw that comment on Twitter by a reviewer, an early reviewer of the episode. His name is Julian. He said that, you know, out of all the midseason finales, you know, this one really felt like a finale. And it was just really well done. Honestly, I, I am so, so excited for, for part three. This episode was just, it's perfect. You know what this episode reminds me of? It reminds me of Infinity War. For, you know, just for the Marvel movies, the ending scenes, and I'm going to be doing a video later on tomorrow, you know, about, uh, well, just that ending scene in general, because I can't get over that ending scene. It really felt like they just took over completely. Chaos is about to happen. And I, I mean, there's only eight episodes left and this definitely set it up now. And, and, I, and I do want to say that I really... There's a lot of things that happened in this episode, and I and I guess I did give like a I always added a, like a little asterisk to whenever I said those things, but I was saying that if it was just Leah that died, if you know there was no CRM stuff, I would be disappointed. But then I always said, but it depends on how they do it. This is kind of a perfect example. We like Aaron didn't die. Leah was really the only big death. Actually, we lost Marco, and there was no real CRM thing though. They do hint at one little tiny thing, and we'll talk about that right away. I don't know if you guys caught that dialogue, but we'll get into that. But there was really none of that, but it was the way that they did it that I was like, you know what? I, I'm wrong about that. This episode felt like the buildup of everything throughout the last 16 episodes, honestly. And I'm, I'm starting to think that this is the way that this, this last season was structured, which was the first 16 are going to basically be like your normal season. And then the final eight is going to be like the epic conclusion to the entire series. Because it honestly felt like that. Like, it was so different having Leah and Maggie together this time. It was like it was done right. There was just something about it where I was like, man, I really get the history here. And I am willing to admit I was 100% wrong about what to do with Leah. You know, I kept saying for the last however many weeks now or, or, or a few months now that, like, I want Leah to be a good character. I really wanted Leah to be a good character because I just, you know, I could see that in her. Nope, definitely not. Like, as soon as they, they, they showed the fact that she's hunting Maggie down, just Maggie's fear when she sees Leah walking out outside the hilltop. I was like, all right, no, Leah's the villain, and I love that. She's so badass. This is insane what's happening right now. The whole thing was done so well, and it was actually shocking because I didn't expect Marco to die. He's not really like a main character or anything like that. He's more of a, of a like a, a recognizable face around Hilltop, but I wasn't expecting that. It just sort of happened, and then Maggie looks, and you see the fear in her eyes when she sees Leah. I, I was like, oh, man, you get the tension there. You get that history there. And so I like the fact that when you look at all 16 episodes that have aired so far, it literally all accumulated to this one moment here. You get a mixture of some of that Reaper stuff there and that history between Maggie and Leah. 
You get some of the stuff between Daryl and Leah a little bit there. There's there's some stuff there we'll talk about. And then there's the Commonwealth and just the, you know, the accumulation of what happened there in the very beginning, the stuff with Lance throughout all of part two here, and then some stuff with Max and Eugene. Overall, such a great mid-season finale. It felt like a finale. It actually really felt like a finale. I think this is up there for one of the best mid-season finales of all time. It is definitely top five. And I'm not overhyping this. This is definitely top five. The ending scene with all the Commonwealth banners going over Alexandria and the hilltop, and we'll talk about the Oceanside stuff in a second. I was like, holy shit, this really feels like it's it, it, the war is about to begin. And like, it kind of feels like the Commonwealth won. But at, the, at that point there, Lance was like, screw it. I'm taking it all. Like, man. Anyways, let's go through this a bit more organized here. I was kind of rambling off on, on little things here and there. So like I said, the music felt very cinematic. And again, a lot of that could be because of, of the soundbar I have and stuff. You know, it could... My viewing experience could be a little bit different. Like if you guys didn't notice too much of a change in terms of the cinematics and the, and the music and stuff, then I guess maybe there wasn't too much of a change. But, you know, for me, I noticed that a lot because my viewing ex experiences changed, right? From like episodes 15 and earlier to when I watched this one, which, I mean, this is my review. These are my thoughts, right? This is like my experiences watching the episodes. So I'm just sort of giving you my point of view on it. I also noticed there was a scene there where Maggie was talking with Herschel and I actually heard a part of the season one, episode one music with, you know, that scene there where, where Morgan's having a hard time killing his wife and he, he can't pull the trigger. There's some stuff there with Rick when he sees the bicycle girl. There's that piece of music there. There's that melody. A little bit of it made an appearance here in this episode. And, and it was a, in a small scene between Maggie and Herschel. If you go watch that scene again, you'll hear it. It's very, very faint. Or at least I heard it. I also wanted to mention that um, Maggie trusts Negan now. and. I love that. As soon as I saw him say or her say that to him, I was just like, holy shit, this was, this is what I wanted. Like, yeah, she's not going to get along with him right away and she doesn't completely like, like him or anything like that. But for her to just say to him, I trust you. Like, I, you know, like, I'll never forget what you did. You saved Herschel. I, I love that so much because I think she's starting to see who he is. And now we're starting to see how this relationship could actually work and why Isle of the Dead makes a lot of sense. I know a lot of people are having issues with that. Like, why the hell does that make sense? How can they actually be together and have a spinoff together? It's like, you know what? You have to get the context of that. And for people who keep bringing up the, you know, because Glenn died and all that, I understand that. I really, like, I understand why Maggie should never get over it. But you got to remember, too, like, times change a lot. You start to understand more context to things. And man, it's been like four or five seasons already. It's been a long time. And Maggie finally just said that I, I, can, I'm, I can trust you, right? And again, there's so much more context than all of that. I think people got to let it go. Honestly, Negan's a good guy now. He, I think he's been redeemed. I know it's personal because Glenn died. And I know Glenn was everybody's favorite and Abraham as well. But everyone's done bad things. It's really as simple as that. Everyone has done bad things on this show. If you were just on that side of the coin, on that side of the you know that situation, maybe you would hate Rick and everyone else, right? But you're not. You're on you know Rick's side. You're like, I'm just really happy. I'm so happy that that scene actually happened. I I almost got goosebumps during that. I was just like, man, this actually feels really nice. I really can't wait to see what part three is going to bring. I'm really excited for that. And I'm really excited for Isle of the Dead. I think Isle of the Dead is going to be such a good show. There was also this other storyline here with the Commonwealth soldier. Uh, this Commonwealth soldier dude got bit. Um, and there was a lot of intensity here. I will admit, I don't really understand what happened during this one scene. Because obviously there's a lot of builds up here. And I was like, okay, so Daryl and them obviously said that like we're going to take a chance and kill them all. But the way this scene was played out, it almost seemed like the Commonwealth troops spread out a little bit, and they were about to shoot Daryl, Aaron, and Gabriel. So I don't know if that's what was about to happen, or just like, yeah, I don't know. To me, it seemed like they were about to all turn their guns on each other, but I could also see it where maybe Daryl and them just like decided to do it at that one opportunity because it was the best moment to do it, right? Anyways, that whole thing basically was just for them to get away from there, and then Daryl finds out, oh shit, Lance and them are going after Maggie, we need to go and help. Daryl, by the way, is not on the Commonwealth side anymore. Like, that bridge is burned down, definitely. There's no way... He will be allowed uh, back inside Alex. Or not? Did I say Alexandria? I meant the Commonwealth. There's no way he's going to be allowed, and so that's really scary for Judith and for RJ, 
right? Like, it's going to be really scary. I don't know where they're going to go there, but that's sort of the point of the ending of the episode, right? Part three is going to be nuts. I love that scene where Daryl picks up the walkie-talkie, and I can't remember exactly what he says to Lance, but it's like, he's not here anymore, or like, I, I, he's done with, or whatever the hell. Like, he was referring to the dead Commonwealth soldier, and Lance just seems so shocked. There is also another storyline where we do see Max and Sebastian, and there's some stuff, you know, with uh, Connie and Kelly and Eugene, and... They were all like, you know, I guess they've been kind of building it up for a little bit here. But basically, they're just like, what should we do with all this, you know, Pamela Milton information that we have? We know what's happening here. We just need some proof. And so Max is like, well, I can get that proof. And she actually does. It was great to see Pamela Milton in this episode. I'll I'll admit it. Like, we haven't seen her in a bit. So it was actually really great to see her here. Sebastian actually noticed that Max took the, I guess, the files on whatever And he didn't seem to care. Like, he literally could have said anything there. He could have been like, no, you're not doing that. Took those files away. But he knew, and he was just like, I know what you're about to do. I know you're trying to do something. I'm just going to let it happen. And honestly, I think he let it happen because his mom's been basically cutting him off for how long now, right? He doesn't get get any more money. And I think he's pretty pissed off at his mom. So he's like, you know what? I'm just going to let this happen because screw it, right? Not only that, I think I do think Sebastian's probably going to use this to his advantage later because he knows that Max did it. And at the end of the episode, Max was sort of playing it like, oh, what the hell is this when Pamela threw the newspaper down, right? So I wonder if Sebastian's going to be the one that reveals it and then just sort of tells everybody and then Max will be in trouble kind of thing, right? And then he's kind of, he's seen as the hero to Pamela and all that. Maybe he'll get some of his stuff back. But yeah, I mean, they posted this in the newspaper. Everybody knows we didn't see any of the rioting and the protests. But episode 17, that's happening. Like, that's going to be big in episode 17. Not only that, but there was sort of a nod, and this isn't necessarily CRM. Like, it's not, I'm not saying it's CRM for sure, but maybe, just maybe, because as they're going through stuff on the newspaper, like, if you notice, the the article that they posted, or not the article, but I guess the, the big headline there in the newspaper was all about Sebastian's trip to, or that, that high, money heist thing that he did, right? None of it was actually on the Commonwealth soldiers going missing. So that's really interesting because one thing that they said there was that they're hiding people in this location and that they actually have the coordinates to that location, which means that, and that's most likely what's going to happen because they need that proof. In part three, they're probably going to go to that location to confirm it, right? Because Connie needs that confirmation. She wants to make sure that this is legit. So I think they're going to go to that location to try and confirm that, you know, people are being taken here. And that's where Tyler Davis is. And so where are they going, right? I think that is where we could get some CRM stuff. And it's only eight episodes left, so I can totally see them going there. And within the first three or four episodes of of the final part, I could see that being the big thing. So, yeah, uh, the point is that one little thing was definitely really exciting. I really can't wait to see what, like, where are they taking them, right? Like, where is the Commonwealth taking these people? They're hiding them somewhere. It's just where? Like, like what is this place? Now, the whole showdown, obviously, or I guess the episode sort of built up to the bigger showdown at the end. We see Leah kill Marco and, um, yeah, all that sort of play out. Eventually, Leah takes Maggie to the cabin that her and uh, and Daryl were staying in. and um. Yeah, we get a really badass scene there. And honestly, I really like the chemistry between Leah and Maggie. It really felt like just during all of this here, I just kept thinking like, you know what? I was wrong about the Reaper arc a little bit. It actually did kind of matter at the end. It all builds up to this moment here. It's actually like now looking back at the Reaper arc, I get it a little bit more. Like this episode actually makes like all, a lot of the episodes or at least the Reaper focused episodes a lot better. It all makes sense. You know, it wasn't just like episode nine was just sort of let's wrap that up quick and then jump into the Commonwealth arc. This one here just combined all of it. It combined all the 16 episodes of the final season, and it just made everything make sense. And so, man, I'm guessing that's Angela Kang's work, right? Like, that she's the showrunner. So, I mean, good on her. She really planned this out well. Daryl was also the one to kill Leah, so a lot of us got that right. You know, a lot of us thought, well, was it going to be Aaron, or was it going to be Leah, or would Leah kill Aaron, and Daryl would kill Leah? It was basically that, like, Leah was going to kill Maggie. Like, Leah was literally going to kill Maggie there, and then Daryl was forced to kill Leah. I will say, you know, like, Daryl didn't really have much reaction to killing Leah. Like, he didn't really care. But I also think at this point, it was just sort of like they had to leave. And the way it was done, I'm actually, like, 100% okay with. Like, I I wish there, there would have been more of a, like, a realization from Leah 
that she got shot by Daryl, right? But it is what it is. Like, honestly, it is what it is. I, I think that if Daryl was actually staring at Leah, like, saw her face, saw her eyes, I don't even know if he would be able to pull the trigger. Like, I think, honestly, I really think it would be way too hard. So I'm glad that, you know, they did it in a way that makes sense. And just overall, you know, you get to the ending and Lance has now taken over Alexandria and the hilltop. Like, they own those places now. So all the residents there are gone. And that's the thing for people like Daryl, Maggie, you know, Aaron, Negan, um, like everybody, where are they going to go now? They're forced to sort of live out there in the wild now again, which is kind of cool because they can't go to the Commonwealth, obviously. Uh, they can't go to the Hilltop, Alexandria. They can't even go to Oceanside because we saw, at, like, I can't even believe this is actually happening, but Lance is flipping a coin. And then if it lands on like tails or heads or whatever, he's just like, I'm going to kill you. Like you're dead. So I'm wondering if he's making them choose. Like if you choose heads or tails and you guess right, you get to live. Like, if that's what he's doing there or whatever the hell's happening, holy shit, that's dark. And that's what I mean. This episode ends in us in such a dark way. The Commonwealth completely took over. And now we enter this new era here where we're in the final eight. And it's all about really fighting back against this very big power. Honestly, the Commonwealth is the biggest power, the biggest group that our, our group has ever faced. And obviously they do have some leverage here because there's like politics that sort of way into all of it, right? With Pamela Milton and stuff that Eugene, Connie, Kelly, Max and all of them can do. But man, they really set up part three so well and I, I can't believe it. I'm so happy with this episode. I honestly, I do have to watch it again. So anyways, I'm going to leave it here. Definitely post all your thoughts down below. Post all of your predictions for part three. And uh, yeah, hope you guys home with the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.